And so this is a, another type of cap model, in cap model. Uh, this is, I think I mentioned last time in, you know, when I was talking about the future caudal model and, and all these other type of uh, constitutive models out there, right? This is one of the most complex I've ever encountered, probably the most complex I've ever encountered. This is the one that has like 62, uh, basically 62 parameters to, to fit this model, uh, which means you'd have to do 62 experiments, independent experiments to actually populate it properly. But, uh, so now, you know, this is the same type of picture as I showed you in the very first slide with the Moore Coulomb. It's just now it's opening, you know, positive is in, in the other direction. And whereas the Moore Coulomb would continue to open to infinity in pressure, now we have a cap on the top of the model. Right? So if I increase the pressure, it causes permanent deformation through pore collapse. Right? And so then this, this middle picture, this is, this is that side view, the meridional view, right? So, so here, there, whereas the, the, cat, the, um, the uh, Cam Clay model had a straight line and then sort of intersected by these ellipses, here it's, you know, in this model, everything is smooth. And it has to do with that same kind of computational aspect that I was mentioning before. Uh, that, you know, we really want smooth surfaces so that we can return ourselves to the yield surface uh, when we do a computation. And so then, uh, here's the view looking down the hydrostat of this particular model. Right? So remember, um, you know, more Coulomb would, more Coulomb would look like this, right? So this model, in fact, will reproduce more Coulomb and Drucker Prager and, and other things just by turning on and off parameters. So while you see it here is a very generically kind of smooth surface, if we turn on and off certain parameters, then we can reproduce these other models. So this model uh, is really a generalized model for inelastic behavior. So basically everything we've talked about so far is in terms of tensile strength. So in all of these previous models, and you can't see it here, but this surface doesn't, you know, so positive in this, in this picture, this is positive pressure, right, positive. So net, Negative would be the other way into the board, and it's a little hard to tell, but I mean, it should be you, you should be able to see that you know this doesn't this does not extend infinitely in the negative direction, and it's 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 really obvious uh, in in that pit one right, so in this case it's flipped over, but this is tension. This is tension in this direction now, and it obviously comes to a point there. It doesn't extend infinitely. Right? So these models predict very little or no tensile stress for a rock. And this is quite true. I mean, rocks do not have, a, while their compressive strength is large, their tensile strength is very, very low comparatively. Okay. 